Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And first of all, I want to address a couple of comments that have been left on uh, the comment section of this uh, YouTube channel. Um, some of you say, uh, oh, she only approves the comments that are favorable and she deletes the ones that are negative. And I probably do approve and, and check off uh, more positive than negative, and I'll tell you why. There's a good reason for it. Um, the ones that I don't approve, by the way, are things like uh, one woman posted 60 times about my need for plastic surgery. 60 postings, deleted them all. Negative about a lot of things, including my appearance, and so I don't really want to post that 60 times on my channel. Um, some people use really questionable language, bad language, I won't do that. Um, when you call me names or you do all capital letters, never going to get approved. Um, one of the problems is that many of you make statements like, um, check out this website because this doctor really knows what he's talking about. I don't have time. I really don't have time to address it. Uh, all these different websites and other videos and all that sort of thing. Um, everything that we do here at Wellness Form Health and everything that I do is vetted. In other words, we analyze and we have a filter that we bring things through that, that um, uh, that lead to certain conclusions. It's not an open forum, like everybody just posts stuff and, and um, it, you know, we don't do any checking of things out. So um, if, we, if we did that for all the comments that are posted, like check out this blog because this particular doctor is a great guy and he recommends everything that Pam doesn't recommend, um, that would be a whole full-time job for somebody and we just don't have the time. So I approve comments and some of you ask questions and some of you say I disagree. Um, I'm okay with all that. I'm just not okay with uh, spending another 40 hours a week checking out all the suggestions that you make and I can't post them until we do. And um, like I said, I'm not going to post the stuff that's really uh, bad news. So anyway, um, now on to today's topic. I want to talk about subclinical hypothyroidism. Um, subclinical hypothyroidism is often diagnosed when peripheral thyroid hormone levels are within normal range, but thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, is mildly elevated. The definition of mildly elevated is a little different depending on who you ask. But anyway, it's a common condition. It occurs in as much as 8% of the general population. It's more common in older people and disproportionately affects women rather than men. In 80% of cases, T TSH levels are lower than 10, um, but, but the threshold for treatment is much lower than that. In most cases, unfortunately, um, the hormone is prescribed, usually levothyroxine, mainly because the, the, the myth is, and it is a myth, and I'll come back to that in a second, that medication will prevent progression to clinical hypothyroidism. And a lot of times this is discovered just in routine blood tests, which we do an awful lot of these days in doctor's offices. Overdiagnosis and treatment of subclinical hypothyroidism has become very common, not only because of the routine blood tests, but in part due to the promotion of this condition by the alternative health community. So for example, Dr. Jason, Jacob Teitelbaum, a medical doctor, is the author of several books, including From Fatigue to Fantastic, and he maintains a popular website in which he offers a questionnaire for self-diagnosis, and then once you diagnose yourself with um, cl subclinical hypothyroidism, he has supplements that you can take books to buy and protocols to follow and etc. There are dozens of other websites featuring self-diagnosis questionnaires that attribute almost any symptom a person might experience as to subclinical hypothyroidism and requiring treatment. So just a couple of examples I'll give you. According to Very Well Health, feeling sad, worthless, or restless, difficulty concentrating, snoring, and losing interest in daily activities are all symptoms of hypothyroidism. They have a list of probably a few dozen hormonesbalance.com features a long list including acne, lack of motivation, difficulty expressing yourself, anxiety, feeling socially distant, hypoglycemia, and the mythical condition referred to as brain fog. There's an article on this topic in the Health Brace Library which you can take a look at as symptoms that your thyroid is sluggish as they refer to it. And then the National Academy of Hypothyroidism actually lists 223 symptoms of hypothyroidism, uh, subclinical hypothyroidism. And I won't read all 200 123 to you, but they include things like craving carbohydrates, abdominal discomfort, 
uh, hot flashes, slow speech, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, frequent urination, yawning, hearing loss, soreness after exercise, being fatigued, on the other hand, needing little sleep, unusual increase in energy, feeling the need to exercise more than usual, plantar fasciitis, dull facial expression, calloused heels, staring, feeling either elated or depressed, disorganized thinking, difficulty making decisions, anger and aggressiveness. Well, according to many practitioners, almost any physical symptom, thought, or emotion that a person might have at any given point in time is a sign of subclinical hypothyroidism, which of course can be resolved with drugs and supplements. Well, the traditional medical profession sort of adds to all of this mess by... Um, because the American Thyroid Association and the American College of Clinical Endocrinology guidelines recommend treatment for people who have TSH levels between 4.5 and 10, particularly if the patients have symptoms of hypothyroidism. Well, that might on its surface seem to make sense, but one of the problems is that even when you get beyond all of this alternative medicine nonsense, the symptoms of hypothyroidism include things like fatigue and, and weight gain and depression, and there are a lot of reasons for these types of things besides thyroid uh, issues. The guidelines include, by the way, an acknowledgement that there is limited evidence to support these recommendations. Unfortunately, that acknowledgement is often ignored. Research shows that while 90% of people with subclinical hypothyroidism and a TSH level under 10 qualify for treatment, medication doesn't improve their quality of life or symptoms. A meta-analysis of 21 randomized controlled trials, including over 21, almost 2,200 adults with subclinical hypothyroidism, showed that taking levothyroxine lowered TSH levels, but it did not improve quality of life and did not make any measurable difference in symptoms. So this is another example of how you get really nice blood work, but not much change in your health status or your health condition. The largest of these trials involved 738 adults who were between the age, an average age of 74.4 years of age, who had TSH levels of between 4.6 and 19.99. Uh, and free thyroxine or T4 uh, within the normal reference range. This is considered normal for older adults, by the way, but is often treated with medication anyway. And a note that I should insert here is that many times with older adults, there is no consideration for age in looking at lab tests. There's this, and, and that needs to change. Well, in this case, the participants were randomized to take levothyroxine or placebo with dose adjustments for TSH levels or the presence of coronary artery disease, and at one year, no differences between the groups in terms of hypothyroid symptoms, including fatigue levels. There were no secondary benefits reported either. So it just goes to show you when you overdiagnose people and treat them with meds, you really don't, there, there's no benefit, you just get side effects from the drugs. Treating people who don't really have hypothyroidism causes harm, one of which is that you can actually depress their normal production of thyroid. So the decision to start thyroid hormone, while it sometimes is very necessary, it, it should be well considered and make sure that it's actually necessary because once you start down that path, you often can't withdraw from taking the medications the longer you take them. And this disproportionately does affect the older patient who is treated with levothyroxine at increasingly marginal degrees of hypothyroidism. You know, if you think back and, and look back, medical care used to be reserved for people who were really sick and who benefited from treatment. Today, what's happened is in an effort to expand the market for drugs and other treatments, healthy people are subjected to more and more tests. And the result is that sooner or later, if you do enough testing, you're gonna find some type of abnormality that justifies more testing or drugs or treatment or procedures. So people have to be very cautious. We call it the medical mill, where you start out as a healthy person, get poked and prodded enough, and you actually become a sick patient in a sick care system. Um, last thing I'll mention today uh, is uh, March 9th in Copenhagen, Denmark. We are having the inaugural conference, the Symposium on Scientific Freedom, uh, with some former Cochrane uh, reviewers who followed Peter Goethe when he got uh, thrown out of Cochrane because he insisted on telling the truth about things that were very uncomfortable for the Cochrane organization. Uh, Dr. Peter Bragan and I will be there. We're both presenters at the conference. We'll be involved in the Q&A panel and the discussion about um, the implications of scientific freedom, um, which means the uh, ability to have opinions outside of the mainstream view of things, which is what I do every week on YouTube. Um, it's considered 
popular by people who are interested in the truth, very unpopular by the medical establishment. They usually retaliate, and they certainly did with Peter Goethe. So if you happen to be uh, dropping into Denmark on March 9th, um, you can go online and register for the conference, and I uh, would love to see you there. I'm kind of looking forward to this. A bunch of um, scientists with a lot of integrity and uh, who have think, think outside the box, giving presentations all day long on what it means to uh, on their own work uh, in, in these various areas. So anyway, that's all for today, all for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscriber button uh, so you can get these videos every week. And I'll I'll be back to you next Tuesday with more news.